Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of September. Indian Prime Minister Modi says farm reforms historic hits out at opposition. Doha talks difficult, need tough decisions, says Afghan government's chief negotiator. And coronavirus restrictions eased further in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday hit out at the opposition over the controversy surrounding three farm bills taken up in the parliament this week. He said political parties are spreading lies on the bills and these are historic moves that will benefit the farmers. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday hit out at the opposition over the controversy surrounding three farm bills taken up in Parliament that will allow farmers to sell produce directly to bulk buyers and make contract farming easier. In a televised speech, Prime Minister Modi said that the political parties, including main opposition Congress, are spreading lies on the bills and these are historic moves. The three executive orders, which still need approval from both Houses of Parliament, aim to provide a barrier-free trade for farmers' produce outside the notified wholesale markets and empower farmers to enter into farming agreements with private players prior to production for the sale of their produce. किसी को भी बेचने की आजादी देना बहुत ऐतिहासिक कदम है। India's Minister for Food Processing, Harsimrat Kaur Badal, resigned on Thursday over her opposition to the plant laws terming them anti-farmer. The bills have triggered huge protests by farmers in Punjab and Haryana, India's two breadbasket states. Many farmer organizations agree that the new laws will remove an impediment to selling directly to big buyers such as Walmart stores and Tesco, but oppose the legislation because they say that producers will be left with no bargaining power. India has called for the appointment of an Indian lawyer or a Queen's Counsel for Indian death row prisoner in Pakistan, Kulbushan Jadav, to ensure a free and fair trial in the review of his death sentence. Pakistani military court had in 2017 sentenced Jadhav to death on charges of espionage, an allegation denied by India. India on Thursday called for the appointment of an Indian lawyer or a Queen's Counsel for Kulbushan Jadhav, an Indian death row prisoner in Pakistan, to ensure a free and fair trial in the review of his death sentence. The assertion by India comes days after Pakistan's parliament extended for four months an ordinance that allowed Jadav to file an appeal against his conviction in a high court, as required by the International Court of Justice. Spokesperson of the Indian Foreign Ministry Anurag Srivastava during an online media briefing said the Pakistani government has not been able to fulfill its obligations on implementation of the International Court of Justice judgment in letter and spirit. The government of Pakistan has not been able to fulfill its obligations to implement the ICJ judgment in its letter and spirit. There are some basic issues which they need to address. One, the provision of all uh, relevant documents for this case to provide for unimpeded and, and unconditional consular access to Sri Kulbushan Yadav as well as the appointment of an Indian lawyer or a Queen's Council to ensure that the trial is free and fair. Queen's Council is a barrister or advocate appointed counsel to the UK Crown on the recommendation of the Lord Chancellor. A Pakistani military court had in 2017 sentenced Jadav to death on charges of terrorism and spying, an allegation denied by India. Moving on. 
Pakistan has decided to elevate illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan to the status of a full-fledged province, according to Pakistani Minister Ali Amin Gandapur, quoted by local media reports. Activists have been critical of the move and said it aims to illegally subsume Gilgit Baltistan in Pakistan. Pakistan has decided to elevate illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan to the status of a full-fledged province with constitutional rights, according to Pakistani Minister Ali Amin Gandapur. Prime Minister Imran Khan would soon visit the region and make a formal announcement in this regard, Pakistani newspaper Express Tribune quoted Gandapur as saying. There was, however, no immediate reaction to the minister's remarks from India, which claims the region as part of its erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir and has consistently opposed any changes made in the past in the region. Gilgit Baltistan has witnessed regular protests by activists over alleged human rights violations by Pakistani forces to muzzle dissent in the region against the China-Pakistan economy corridor. Activists have also been critical of upcoming polls in the region and said these are moves to illegally subsume Gilgit Baldistan in Pakistan. They have argued under the current circumstances, free and fair elections are impossible because of the Dragonian Schedule 4 and Anti Terrorism Act, which are used to crush civil dissent. In news from Afghanistan, Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, has said that negotiations between the Afghan government and the Taliban will be difficult as government will have to take hard decisions. The U.S. brokered ongoing direct peace talks began this month in Doha. Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, has said that the talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban will be difficult, stating that the Afghan team will face issues that will require hard decisions to be made. But while giving an interview to a media outlet, Abdullah also pledged that the rights of the Afghan people, including women's rights and civil liberties, will be protected in the negotiations. Meanwhile, General Scott Miller, commander of the U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan, speaking during a visit to the eastern province of Lagman, called the ongoing negotiations in Doha very promising. This comes as contact groups of the Afghanistan government and the Taliban continue their discussions about the procedural structure of the peace talks and fighting is still on between security forces and Taliban fighters. Peace talks between the Taliban and the delegation representing the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan began in Qatar on September 12 with officials from many nations and international organizations attending or speaking virtually at the opening ceremony. The U.S. military handed over four new attacker planes to Afghanistan to boost Afghan defense forces on Thursday. This comes as U.S. plans to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan by next year, subject to the Taliban's certain security guarantees. The United States military on Thursday handed over four new A-29 Super Tucano planes to boost capabilities of Afghan Defense Forces in a ceremony held at the Afghan Air Force Base in capital Kabul. Speaking during the handover ceremony of the aircraft, U.S. General John Diedrich, commander of 1st Special Forces Command, said that NATO remains committed to assisting Afghanistan with training, funding and denies safe haven for the international terrorism. The U.S. invaded Afghanistan in 2001, and since then thousands of American service members have lost their lives in the longest war in Washington's history. In addition to the four new aircraft, the U.S. has given 18 A-29 Super Tucano planes to the Afghan forces since 2016. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. As the price of the onions shot up in the Bangladeshi markets following India's decision to ban the export of onions, Bangladesh officially conveyed its deep concern over the matter. 
India's ban to export onion has led to a skyrocketing of prices of the key cooking ingredient in neighboring country. Bangladesh's Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin said on Thursday that Indian Foreign Ministry is very repentant for not informing the country beforehand while imposing a ban on onion exports. Momin made the remarks while talking to reporters at his office soon after his return from Turkey. India banned the export of all varieties of onions to its biggest importer Bangladesh with immediate effect from Monday after its crop was damaged and harvesting delayed by excessive rain. As the price of onions shot up in the Bangladeshi markets, residents queued up near government vehicles to buy onions at a subsidized rate. যেতে আমাদের এখন ভারত তো আমাদের পেজ বন্ধ করে দেওয়ার কারণে আমরা এখন রাস্তায় এখন পেজের দাম বাড়িয়ে গেছে এখন পেজের দাম 120 টাকা হয়েছে যেতে এখন আমাদের লাইনে দাঁড়াই আমাদের পেজ কিনতে হয় ইন্ডিয়ার পেজ একটু বন্ধর কথা বলে পেজ ডাবলের বেশি হয়ে গেছে এখন একটু আস্তে আস্তে দাম কমতেছে বাংলাদেশের মেইন অপজিশন পার্টি বাংলাদেশ ন্যাশনালিস্ট পার্টি অর বিএনপি টুক টু দ্য স্ট্রিটস অফ ঢাকা অন থার্সডে টু প্রোটেস্ট এগেইনস্ট ইন্ডিয়ার ব্যান অন এক্সপোর্ট অফ অনিয়ন্স BNP members were seen holding banners, posters and raising slogans against India. Meanwhile, Bangladesh's government has already taken steps to import onion from Turkey and Egypt. In news from Nepal, authorities in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley have further eased coronavirus restrictions for an indefinite period beginning Thursday. The Himalayan nation has so far reported over 59,570 coronavirus cases and more than 380 deaths. Authorities in Nepal's Kathmandu Valley which comprises Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur districts extended the ongoing relaxed coronavirus prohibitory orders for an indefinite period beginning Thursday. Shops, hotels and restaurants, long haul public vehicle services and domestic flights resumed from Thursday while educational institutions, gyms, salons and any kind of gatherings are still not allowed. Passengers were seen at ticket counters as they reach bus stations to travel to their destinations as the public transport services began after being suspended for over 6 months to curb corona virus spread so ab gaadi mein passenger jai ali kam hai rakhne ra ab swasthagat usme chai ab yo sanitizer dekhi liye ra max har ko prayog garani bhanne kuro cha ha tyo pani hami taiyari garchau The Himalayan nation had enforced a nationwide lockdown in March to curb the spread of the virus that put its 30 million citizens under months of lockdown. So far Nepal has reported over 59,570 coronavirus cases and 383 deaths. Business of idol makers in eastern India has been hampered as there are no buyers of the idols amid the coronavirus threat that has been looming large over the country's festivities. Idol makers in eastern India are disappointed as there are no buyers of the idols amid the coronavirus threat that has been looming large over the country's festivities. Artisans in India's West Bengal state which is known for its grand Hindu festival of Navratri or festival of nine nights worshiping warrior goddess Durga was left disheartened as the spirit of festival was dampened by the pandemic অর্ডার তো আগাড়ি আতাই হয় হ্যাঁ তা কবি মানে স্টাফেরা আতা নেই হয় কুমাটুলি মে যে করোনা যে ভয় লাগছিল তা থোড়া থোড়া আগে বাইনা হয়েছে অ্যাডভান্স হয়েছে ইন নর্থ ইস্ট অ্যান্ড আগরতলা সিটি হাফ ফিনিশড আইডলস ওয়ার স্টিল ওয়েটিং টু বি কমপ্লিটেড অ্যান্ড সোল্ড অ্যাজ অর্ডার্স ফর আইডলস ট্রিকল ডাউন with ceremonies being cancelled due to pandemic this year. Dekhan unno no bar amar boro boro bishoy to government er jomosto department e amar thakur gulo jeto boro boro jagate jeto e bochor ami icche kore boro thakur koreni bujhte pare je hoyto boro pujo hobe na ami choto choto 30 ta thakur kore je er moddhe 8 10 ta bain hoyeche baki customer er shonge ekhono jodh dekha Every year Hindus across India celebrate the festival of God of Engineering and Architecture Lord Vishwakarma with great fervor. However, this year with the pandemic, the demand for idols has dwindled leaving the artisans with almost no work or money.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.